Welcome. Welcome everybody back in. We're all, uh, back to another episode of Steam vs. Machine. Of course, I'm always joined by Scott Steam, the lead handicapper over Winners and Winners. Scott, how are you doing? I'm going with the giant head look today, Truman. How's that working out? I love it. It looks like a, it looks like got a little little trick or treating there, huh? A little car trick or treating, yeah. socially distanced. Uh, I am. Uh, we're just about uh, two hours in and counting for some sort of drive-through trick or treat event here in uh, Blue Springs, Missouri, and we don't appear to be anywhere near the beginning of it, actually. Oh, well, so, plenty of plenty of times. plenty of candy. Hopefully, maybe. If a few almond joys, maybe. Um, yeah, we're gonna find we're gonna find out what happens here and see how much candy uh, we, we clear out of this hall. Um, there's, yeah, it's a, it's a nightmare. But you know what? Football goes on and picks go on. So, yeah. I'm well, ready. at the end of the day, it's the the car trick or treating sounds very safe and secure, just like your bet picks. Am I right? Uh, you would have been, except for last week. Not so except good last week. We went one three and one on our picks. Except for last week. Let's get into them, huh? Uh, let's see. Last last week, you you took the Browns minus three, and you're lucky you took the Browns at minus three, as Cody Parkey went that went on to you know, as as the Browns went up three towards the end of the game there, then to they missed the extra point to go up four, which I know that I yeah. bet on Sunday and I had it at four, and I wanted to kill Cody Parkey. It was great. So you had the Bills, you had the Browns at minus three, minus one twenty five. You ended up pushing, which was fine. You had uh you had Atlanta minus one. Uh, uh, man. <laughs> What an epic, epic collapse by the Atlanta there. Go, go up a touchdown with 30 seconds left as Todd Gurley can't fall down at the one yard line or whatever and end up blowing it by, by a point to Detroit there. Uh, you had the yeah, the Bills minus 10 and a half, just not quite. And just and, and like I said, it was you know the Bills just struggled to struggled to cover those big spreads. They struggled to take away those big to blow out those bad teams. That was a ridiculous game. They had eight field goals. At- field goal attempts they made only six of them uh including the, having the ball at the six yard line the 20 it was just ridiculous it was just I've, I've got the notes on another sheet about how ridiculous it was but yeah yeah they just dominated that game and, and should have covered it easily but they didn't well on the bright side the green bay and houston game did stay under uh you had the under 57 that total was at 55 not sweating that one at all with the way your week was going week never doubt going, right yeah <laughs> And you also had the Jaguars plus nine, and they ended up losing by I think eleven. Is the number yep. I've got in my yep. head? Yeah, had an early had an early lead and just <clears throat> couldn't quite hang on. So much that I thought you had also gone two two and one, like me, but I went back and looked into uh, I texted you that day. I was like two two and one, and you were like I think it was one three and one. I couldn't believe the Jaguars right. lost. And how did you end up doing with your picks? You go three and three with yours. I went I went two two and one, but I went positive because. Uh, so well, we'll we'll get into it. I had the Cowboys. I had the Cowboys minus one, minus one ten. Uh, they look awful. Uh, and then we had the Steelers. We had Steelers minus one at minus. I had, we both had the no. I had the Steelers minus one at minus one hundred four. That cashed. They they handled the Titans there pretty well. Uh, the Cardinals money line is where I made a lot of my money. I had them at plus one fifty eight over the Seattle Seahawks. Never a doubt there on Sunday night. No, not a single one. Uh. <laughs> I had, the, I had the Cardinals uh, plus 158 uh, against – I also had the Browns at minus three, which I pushed on these picks. But on my in, in real life, I did bet it at minus four and, again, wanted to strangle Cody Parkey. Uh, and then I also had Atlanta minus one. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't believe it. Um, so, I mean, honestly, you know, I was, we, were both, we were both on the verge there of having – you were on the verge of having an all right week if maybe the Browns, Browns make that field goal, make that extra point and, and Atlanta wins, uh, <laughs> doesn't blow it against Detroit. Me and you both had those picks. Right. We were, you know, we're ridiculous situations away from uh, a four and one and a and a three and three and two week for you. So, yeah, you're right. Very close. But you know, there's no there's no uh, uh, close. Only counts in hand, horseshoes and hand grenades. Wow, that was easy. That's the hardest time I've ever had saying that. Uh, yeah, you're close. Yeah. So. Uh, let's look at what that does for us all on the overall total for the year. Let's see. So you you netted minus two sixty five last week at one three and one. That moves your season record to still a a, a respectable plus two twenty five uh, at nineteen fifteen and one. Nice. It'll be we'll have those we'll have those dumb things go on throughout the rest of the year where we where we each have a tie. Love that. Love dumb records like that. Uh, 
I ended up going two, two, and one, but I hit I hit the money line, so I'm at I'm at plus twenty three. Uh, that brings my net for the season up up to minus two fourteen. So again, you know, kind of treading water, waiting for that, waiting for that big week, waiting for waiting for one. You know, the gamblers, <laughs> the gamblers paradox, <laughs> always waiting for a good week. Uh, but yes. we're staying, but we're staying right there. Uh, I'm at net my, net minus two fourteen. Uh, win loss at sixteen, eighteen, and one. You know, we're um, floating right there, right around five hundred. But, uh, I you know, so I don't want to waste your time. You are you are trick or treating. So uh, let's <laughs> <laughs> let's let's move into uh, hopefully some treats, huh? Not some tricks for your for your upcoming picks. All right. Week. Yeah, we're gonna start off with the uh, we're gonna start with the Indianapolis Colts. Going to be uh, visiting the Detroit Lions once again. Looking at the Colts minus three now. This line has recently moved open to two and a half now. Is three. Uh, Lions are two and six straight up and one six and one against the spread. Coming off uh, consecutive losses over their uh, consecutive wins over their past five seasons. That shows you how bad that's been for Patricia. He's only had consecutive wins uh, three times since he's been there. It's only happened uh, eight times in the last five years. Jesus. And when they uh, host the NFC South or AFC South, rather, they are not good. Going one and six straight up, one five and one when hosting the South. The Colts, meanwhile, kind of on the other side of the coin, they're eight and one against the spread, against the NFC North, twelve and one straight up, and eleven one and one as road chalk against the NFC in their last thirteen. I like this Colts defense quite a bit. I think the Lions got nothing for a legitimate defense, which Atlanta does not have. Give me the Colts minus the three points against the Lions. I don't hate it. I think the Colts. I think the Colts are a good team. They're coming off of a, I believe, a bye week. Correct? Yes. Uh, they're coming off of a bye week there. They get to sit out and just rest up, and uh, they get to meet a, uh, a three and three Detroit Lions team, if I remember so, if I remember correctly. Uh, I believe that is Come, correct. Coming yes. up on week eight out of bye week, yeah. So, uh, but the, but Detroit could be riding that high from the from the Atlanta game, but I still I still like that pick. I expect the Colts to handle there pretty well. Uh, my first pick is I've actually got the Los Angeles Chargers minus three and a half uh, at minus one hundred five. They travel to D- that Denver team and. Uh, they travel to Denver and they get to face that Denver team that just looks so uh, bad against the Chiefs this week, this weekend, this past past weekend. Um, they're in the snow. Drew Locke didn't look didn't look good, but you know you don't know how much of that is the snow, how much of that is just Drew Locke being bad. This Denver team's pretty banged up. Uh, I'd call it uh, in a top three in the league for banged up. You know they're not they're no San Francisco 49ers with their 20 plus players on the IR or whatever it is, but I do. I do think the Chargers are kind of surging. They're a little bit better than their record indicates, and uh, with a strong quarterback performance uh, from Justin Herbert, we're you know looking pretty well. I think I may have lost you. Oh no, no, you're right there. Sorry, Scott. Uh, so I've got so we got the Chargers minus three and a half. Uh, uh, so that that'll be my first pick of the week. You want to move into yours for number two? Second pick here that I've got is the uh, Patriots Bills under 41. Uh, these are two offenses that are playing horribly right now. Uh, both of them have scored just two TDs in the last three games. Bills have averaged 30, 17 points per game. The Pats, they've done even worse than that, averaging just 9.3 points per game. Julian Edelman is out for this one. Not sure where the points are going to come from on either side. Two pretty good defenses right here. I'll take the Bills Pats under 41. Oh yeah, and uh, and for the record, on Sunday we're looking at rain there in Buffalo, 50 degrees. Could just be perfect. A, a perfect under low scoring AFC East slugfest over there that they that they always love to do up there in Buffalo. And I think Buffalo always kind of struggles with the Pats, and uh, but Cam Newton does not look good, and Josh Allen and the Bills have kind of looked out of sorts the past few weeks, like just like we talked about. They are only. Only managed to put up 18 against that terrible Jets team there, and you know, and, and didn't even cover the 10 and a half. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I do not hate the pick there with the under there with two struggling offenses right now. Bills struggling to find their rhythm. Pat's uh, been struggling kind of all year, and uh, especially with Cam Newton looking kind of lost compared to his hot start. Um, moving on to my second pick, I have the Packers minus six and a half. Uh, they get to go and face. Man, I don't I don't know if I can really call the Vikings one of the worst teams in the league. They they show flashes, but they're, you know, 
they're right there in the in the bottom three in the NFC or bottom you know bottom six five to six in the NFC. Uh, but you know, so I like and the Packers have looked good. They kind of rebounded off of that off that terrible loss they had on Sunday night uh, a few weeks ago, and they had a really nice bounce back win there. Aaron Rodgers again looked like an MVP candidate, and with that, uh, so I like them to go. And they're going to be at home, so Minnesota has to travel there. I like I I like the Packers minus six and a half uh, by a lot. So that's my that's my second pick there. Move on to your third. All right, I've got Raiders and Browns. I got the Browns minus two and a half. You know this Cleveland team, they got some swagger back last week. Mayfield started off poorly through an interception, literally on his first pass. And then Truman, what did he do? I think he. Well, I, I thought like the first six he went like one and five, and then he completed like the next twenty of twenty one or something, right? Completed twenty straight. The only incompletion was a spike in the ball there at the end. Um, they've uh, uh, the Raiders' defense has been dreadful. Allowed thirty three points per contest. That's the second worst mark in the league, Jeez. and they're just four and fourteen straight up, six and twelve against the spread all time on the road against the AFC North. I think the Browns take care of business. No more calls for Case Keenum as the dog pound rocks and rolls tonight, minus two and a half. Is that where Case Keenum is? I guess I kind of forgot about that. Yeah, I like I like the Raiders. Uh, I, I like the Browns there. The Raiders looked uh, – they didn't look like themselves. So they, Well, they didn't look like the team that beat the Kansas City Chiefs, if that makes sense. They got the bye week and then ended up losing 45-20 to 20 against the Tampa, Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home. So – uh, yeah, I don't, I don't hate that pick, and especially with the Browns team that, that's hot and could find a rhythm. This Brown team, Browns team loves to beat bad teams and uh, loves to choke against their divisional opponents who they actually need to beat. So I believe that's their – I believe they've lost two games on the year and they've both been to – or maybe three games, and they've, but two of them have been terrible losses to the Ravens and the Steelers. Um, looking forward again, my third pick I have this week is uh, – speaking of the Steelers, I have the Steelers' money line at plus 177. I – this is a, this is an interesting one, and of course we talk about this every week. The reason I'm called the machine is because I use the I use the spreadsheet to make all the bets. Uh, we run the spreadsheet through, you know, over over 20 statistics, and then we compare that uh, every every statistic against league average data for the past five years, uh, based on weighting on whether they would win or not, and how much they win the bets. And the Steelers money line is is one that came out this week. Uh, obviously, the Steelers travel to Baltimore, and probably what's the marquee game of the week? Um, I think a lot of people have had the question of who is actually the best AFC team in the AFC North. I think the consensus at the beginning of the year was the Baltimore Ravens. And, but the Steelers have started off undefeated, but they haven't got to face each other this week. And I think this is a big uh, kind of big big marker for where either of these teams are at. And I, so I actually, I, so I think the line is Ravens, uh, I think it started at five and a half. I think it moved down to four. Um, but I like the Steelers just straight up at the money line. Uh, give me the Steelers at the money line at plus 177 for my third pick of the week, and hopefully we hit the cash. Yeah, that's statistically a good spot for you right there. The Steelers are 14-4 uh, and four straight up, 16-1-1 one one against the spread, and their last 18 is underdog for fewer than seven points versus opponents with a winning record. That slides right in for your trend right there. I like your odds. I like that bet. That is a solid play. Uh, my next bet is going to be uh, the New Orleans Saints minus five at Soldier Field there against the dreadful Bears offense. Uh, since handing the ball over to Nick Foles, uh, Bears offense has been bad. They have failed to gain 300 yards in any of his starts. Uh, the Saints defense is probably a better unit than you think it is. Uh, no, uh, no end in sight for the Bears offensive uh, nightmare season to end. Uh, you truly have two very bad options there in Nick Foles and Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, yeah, not good. Give me the Bears. Uh, give me give me uh, the Saints minus the five. Uh, so, Scott, actually, an interesting fact about that is as I check the scores, I always check the lines right before we go on here, uh, that line actually moved to the Saints minus four and a half. So while I had to give you the bad news about the line for the Colts moving to minus three from, two and, from minus two and a half, the Saints actually moved from five down to four and a half. I'll so, take it. I've got you for the Saints at minus four and a half, minus one fourteen. I don't hate. I'll take it. I'll take it every day. Can't cry about that, huh? Um, <laughs> and looksy doos. Uh, guess guess what my fourth pick of the week is? It is also. I didn't let you guess. Do you want to guess? The Saints. Saints. Yes, it's the Saints minus four and a half, minus one fourteen. 
Uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, again, like I said, I, I am a slave to the spreadsheet. Spreadsheet loves this pick. Uh, and I just something, one of those that I saw and I don't hate it. You know, I, I look at every pick and I go, wow, that's interesting. And then I bet it anyways. But, uh, I love, I love this pick saints minus four and a half. I think I just, I, but the, 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 my only concern there is the saints have been so spotty. We've seen the saints, uh, retreat into just being terrible and they're, they're playing in the uh, afternoon slot, you know, obviously, but uh, what do they call that? America's game of the week over there on Fox or whatever. I assume that'll mm-hmm. be. Although I don't know, 49ers and Seahawks might be America's game of the week. They're both probably on Fox at 225. That'll be interesting. Maybe one of those is CBS. No, CBS probably charges Bron- Broncos. I don't know. But I I do like the Saints minus four and a half. I'm always a little worried that they're going to, that the team that showed up against that Raiders team or it will show up instead of the team that showed up against the Bucks. You never know. But I do like the Saints here minus four and a half, and obviously so do you. So let's move on to our final picks of the week, huh? And get you back to your church treating. <laughs> I'm looking at the I'm looking at that Sunday night game, uh, the Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. Man, there may be defenses worse than the Dallas Cowboys, but there ain't many of them. Um, and uh, is is uh, it's not going to be good. It's going to be played in Philadelphia. Uh, and the big news here is uh, no Dak Prescott. Most likely no Andy Dalton. Welcome Ben DiNucci, seventh-round rookie from James Madison. Yeah, that sounds like the person you want to have your uh, division-winning hopes pen, pinned on. Uh, Eagles going to be without Miles Sanders. I don't really think it matters. I think Boston is able to take care of business here. Ten and a half is a lot for this dreadful Eagles team, but Dallas is that much worse. Their, uh, their only hope was uh, having some kind of offensive spark. And that has gone away since Dak Prescott has been injured. Give me the Philadelphia Eagles laying ten and a half to America's team. You know, I don't hate that, obviously. uh, You know, so James Madison is an FCS school, and it'll it'll be interesting as we see uh, the North the former North Dakota State player uh, Carson Wentz, also from an FCS school, going to going to face each other. I I wonder how many times this has happened. I didn't even think about that. But I, I am interested, and you know James Madison is not a bad not a bad FCS team, but obviously no nowhere on the caliber of the FBS. Uh, so that is an interesting little storyline that I'm sure they'll hype up a little bit on Sunday Night Football. They'll put up a nice little graphic on whatever. But um, the Eagle the, the problem with that Eagles te- the problem with anything in the FC East is you know it's just going to be a shit show, right? You know it's going to be you are going to go. We're going to tune in Sunday night. We're going to watch awful football that might be a little exciting, but at, at but at its core, it will be bad. And so I always get I always get concerned. I really, I it, I, I bet I bet on the NFC. I, I bet on the NFC East too much. It feels like, but I, man, I hate betting on the NFC East because you never really know what you get. All those teams are such a such a bag of tricks and such a you know you never know if they're going to give you a trick or a treat of a game. And that goes for every NFC East team. Four, all four of those teams are in the bottom six in the NFC, by the way. Um, only one team has won an away game all year. <laughs> it's just, it's bad. So, uh, But like I said, only one team has won an away game all year, and it was the Philadelphia Eagles. So Dallas is traveling to Philadelphia. That gives them a significant advantage, especially in the NFC East, where nobody can win. Uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't hate that pick, but I don't, uh, I don't love it, per se. Uh, my final pick, actually, is the Titans minus six and a half. Um, they're coming off that loss to the Steelers last week. They get to face the Bears. Uh, what? No. I'm oh, sorry. Don't believe week. they do. I am on the wrong week. Uh, sorry. They, they get to face the uh, another bad uh, Bengals team. Bengals team, as we as we talked about last week. The Bengals. Uh, right. A team that loves to not win, but, man, they love to ruin my spreads a lot of the time, but... I'm going to I'm going to hope that this one I'm going to hope the Titans get it done. I, I think the Titans are going to be looking to bounce back against a bad against a bad Bengals team and this uh Titans defense doesn't really mess around. They they love to they love to get a lead with Derrick Henry and then they love to just run you into the run you into the dirt. And I could I could see Joe Burrow's been riding a little bit of a high. I could see him kind of crashing back to earth here with rookie of the year talk. And obviously the spreadsheet loves it. I love the uh, Titans at minus six and a half. Uh, it is at minus 120 so that line could move up to the 7. So if you're watching this on Saturday or Friday night, uh, you might consider taking that before it gets to seven. But I've got the Titans at minus six and a half, minus 120 right now, and those are my five picks. Um, you know, um, the, the surprising thing about that series is uh, the last last few years, the Bengals have actually owned it. They've uh, 
gone four and two straight up against Tennessee and five and one against the spread. I don't know. Good luck, buddy. Yeah. Uh, we'll just yeah, we'll have to hang in there. Um, you know, Scott. I, as always, I wish you good luck. Uh, again, Scott's picks for this week for for Mister Steen here. Uh, we got Colts minus three at minus one ten. Bats. Pat Bills under forty one at minus one ten. Browns minus two and a half at minus one ten. Saints minus four and a half at minus one fourteen. Eagles minus ten and a half at at minus one oh six. And for my picks for my five picks for the week, I have the Chargers minus three and a half at minus one oh five. Um I have the Packers minus six and a half at minus one ten. The Steelers money line at plus one seventy seven. Saints minus four and a half at minus one fourteen. And the Titans Titans minus six and a half at minus one twenty. Scott, I do appreciate you being here. Uh, real quick again, I appreciate you. You're obviously the lead handicapper at Winners and Winers. Scott, where else can we where can we find all the Winners and Winners content or just stuff from you? Well, check out our check out our YouTube channel at uh, Winners and Winers. Of course, you can, you can follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook as well. And if you want more of my premium picks, you can do that at WinnersandWinners.com, a site which you should make part of your regular handicapping regimen. Uh, deep dives into every game going on in North America every single day. Winnersandwinners.com. Uh, know it, live it, love it. Uh, and, of, and, of course, I've been Truman Steen. You can find me at Steam Machine on Twitter or Twitch. You, sh- you can also find, if you uh, like like my betting content, you will find more bets just personally from me. You can go to rollingwiththemachine.com, where I post where I post my NFL picks at weekly. And uh, I'm starting to post a little some p- picks during the week here. Uh, and we're going to move up to a premium service starting here pretty soon. So, Again, Scott, I appreciate you being here. Uh, Absolutely. Thanks very much for having me. Appreciate everybody watching. And uh, good luck to all your players. Hope uh, hope every one of those tickets are turned into cash money. Right. And of course, of course, I love everybody in the car. I love you. Have a safe <laughs> Halloween. Don't go out. Don't go out chasing black cats or anything. I know you. <laughs> Thanks, you get you get pretty you get pretty restless on Halloween night. <laughs> That's right. That's love right. Love to go. You're pretty, you're pretty amped up. So love to go yeah, howl at the moon and stuff. I know. <laughs> but all right, Scott. Best of luck. Have a good one. Best of luck right. on your NFL Week 8. Thanks, man. You too. We'll talk, I'll talk to you soon. Love you, bud. All right. Love you too. See you.